Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So today I'm going to spend a little bit more time investigating the amount of heat that's produced inside the Mavic because I'd mentioned in a couple of other clips that I feel like it gets really, really hot and I don't think it's a good idea to keep the gimbal protection globe on the front of the Mavic when you're flying because if you watch the teardown video, right behind that gimbal assembly is a vent and that vent allows air to flow inside the uh, actual copter and there's a fan position right behind that. Now there's been a bit of a debate on the channel as to if that fan is an axial fan or if it's a centrifugal fan. I think it's probably after investigating more a little bit of both. I know any centrifugal fan I've seen in the past has a flat back on it which would redirect all the airflow out through an output port. This one has an open back on it which is typical of an axial fan but it does have an output port on the bottom. So it is blowing a lot of the air, a majority of the air down the bottom of the copter and across that bottom heat sink which is cooling things off down there but again the fact that I can see that fan open on the back leads me to believe that some of that air is making its way across the top board as well be that as it may what I'm going to do with the test is I've got a uh, temperature meter here temperature probe meter and I'm going to check the actual cold temperature or standing temperature of the Mavic before I put it up then I'm going to put it up for I don't know 60 90 seconds and I'm going to without the globe on and I'll check the temperature we'll see how much it heats up then I'll put it up again with the globe on for another 60 or 90 seconds I'll make sure the times are the same and we'll check it with the globe on my suspicion and I haven't done the test but my suspicion is with the globe on because it restricts the airflow through that Mavic that it's going to be hotter and my concern again is if it gets really really hot those components underneath are going to start baking and as I would mentioned before temperature damage on any kind of integrated circuit isn't something that you typically notice right away it's something that will degrade the life of that over time so you may actually be doing damage to the Mavic and not know it for six months or a year from now when those chips start to fail prematurely so anyway let me do the testing now and we'll see how it goes Okay, as I mentioned, there'll be three parts to this test. The first part's going to actually measure the Mavic's temperature cold. So this has been sitting outside with me. It's not a very cold day today. It's about 65, 68 degrees, something like that. So this should be pretty close to whatever the ambient temperature is outside. So what I'm going to do is pick two spots on the bottom of the Mavic, one here and then one between the ultrasonic sensors, and I'll measure each of those uh, er after every test. And there'll be three parts to this. So the measurement cold on this, and you can see the laser actually focuses on that particular area. If I look at the temperature, it looks to me at about 63 point or 64 degrees, let's say 64 degrees. Same down the bottom, about 64 degrees. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is put the Mavic up in the air. I'm gonna fly it for about uh, 60, 90 seconds. I'll land it and then I'll take the temperature again. Now I have no globe on there now, so this should be the coolest it's gonna be. Obviously, if it's flying through the air, there's going to be more uh, wind pushed through that Mavic to cool it down even still. But I wanted to do a hover test because that's probably the most uh, accurate when I compare it to the other tests later. So hang on, let me levitate this. Okay, first test, I'm going to put it up in the air just at hovering height. We'll let it run for about 60 seconds. Once I get it in the air, I'll start the clock. Now, there's no globe on the front of it this time, so it should be the best possible conditions. I imagine it'll be warmer, but hopefully it's not too warm. All right. We'll start the clock. I'm going to give it about 60 seconds of hover time. And we'll see what happens with the temperature after that. Holding position very well, blowing a lot of leaves around. Kind of interesting. All right, about 15 seconds in. Now, I could have run this out across the yard, um, but again, it's really difficult to duplicate the exact pattern of flight. So I didn't want to sort of skew the results by going faster in one direction on one test and maybe slower in another. So I feel like hovering is probably the fairest test of all because it's not really moving that much and it's using the same amount of energy. All right, so we're 45 seconds in. We'll give it another 15 and see uh, see what the temperature looks like once we get past that. All right, coming up on 60 seconds here. Good. Let me bring her down. All right, she's down. Let's get a look at the temperature. So I'm going to try and measure the same two spots on it. One right there, looks like 88 and change. And down below, a little hotter, about 95 and change. So those are very hot temperatures. Again, 89. She's cooling down now because the fan is still running and it's blowing air across the bottom of that. So again, 99 degrees, 100 degrees right there. So that's very, very hot. And obviously, if you put your finger on there, you can feel that temperature in the heat sink. It's doing a great job of cooling it off, but it is transferring a lot of that heat through there. So I'm going to let it sit now for a minute or two before I put it back up with the globe on, just to let it cool down, because I don't want to really cheat the test by having it be hot when I put that globe on there. So give me a second. I'll put the globe on, and we'll start the test. 
Okay, I'd like to do the second part of this test now. So I've got the copter set up exactly where it was before. I've got the protective globe on the front over the gimbal. I'm going to put it up in the air about 60 seconds. I'll put it back down really quickly and then measure the temperature. And let's see if there's a big difference between it flying without the globe and it flying with the globe. So hold on a second and I'll put it up. All right, she's airborne. Same position again. Got the globe on it. We're going to give it about uh, 60 seconds. I'll put her back down on the table and then we'll get a measurement. Now again, to be fair with this test, had I been flying, the air would have been moving through the copter at a pretty good clip, which I'm sure would have kept it colder than it was when I did the test uh, a minute ago when I had the globe off. I don't think that would make much of a difference with the globe on because again, that globe is completely covering that vent in the front. And my thought is with that globe on there, that fan can't pull air in fast enough to cool off those boards to the same degree that it would if the globe wasn't there. So this test should be a really good indication, at least in a hovering position, of how much impact that globe has on it. All right, we're about 45 seconds in. I'll put it down in about 10 seconds. Run over real quick and we'll do a measurement. So hang in there another 10 seconds. Okay, we're right at a minute. Put her down. And let's see what kind of temperature we've got. So now measuring with the globe on, I'll do the same measurements I did before. There we're looking at 101, and down the bottom, which was hotter before, about 100, same degrees, about 100 degrees. So it doesn't seem to really impact it in a hovering position. It seems like it's moving it around. That one actually is a little bit hotter than before, quite a bit hotter, actually. And that's to the front of the actual chamber. And the fan is still running. I can feel it in my hand. But see, it's sitting here now uh, with the fan running. It is going up in temperature. So, uh, and that one's still going up. So the test for me uh, proves one thing. It proves that that globe on there really does restrict the amount of airflow through the copter. And again, I think the test I'd like to do next would be to fly the thing a little bit. And I'm going to have to set up a couple of missions so that it flies the exact same pattern uh, every time so I can get a feel for using the same amount of energy and, you know, spending as much time in the air on each flight that's equal. But short term, that worries me a little bit. And I know it's not a dramatic difference. It's not like it's 97 degrees and 115 degrees. But that extra temperature is something that will definitely go to the heart of the failing of those components over time. So the cooler I can keep it, the better. And putting that globe on there absolutely restricts that airflow through the Mavic, which again, I think is going to reduce your useful life of that product over time. So my recommendation would be don't fly with the globe on. Or if you are going to fly with the globe on, make them short flights, hopefully in colder weather, which will help to keep that uh, base plate cooler. Okay, that's it for today. And to be fair, uh, the difference between globe on and globe off temperature was not that dramatic. I really expected it to be a bigger difference between the two. And again, I hadn't done this test before. But the key thing to remember is that it was warmer with the globe on. And my suspicion is if I held it up in the air more than 60 seconds in a hover, or I flew it around this backyard pretty aggressively with acceleration braking and elevation going on, there would be a wider difference in temperature. But again, at the end of the day, Having that on there means it's going to be hotter down the bottom, and the biggest enemy you've got of electronics is heat. So if this thing gets hotter than it should, or over time it's hotter more than it should be, it's going to reduce the useful life of the component. So my recommendation to you would be don't fly this with the globe on if you can avoid it. If you have to fly with the globe on, um, keep the flight short and, you know, take the globe off when it's sitting there to cool down, you know, give it enough air to get through there with the fans. Um, if you're flying in the colder weather, you might actually get a little bit more flight time out of it with the globe on. But um, for me, it, it definitely proves that it is warmer with the globe on than the globe off. So anyway, that's it for today. I definitely wanted to do this clip quickly because a lot of people were asking about this particular case and uh, I thought I'd, I'd bang the clip out pretty quickly. If there's other questions you have or things that I've missed, drop them in the comments below and I definitely will answer them and we'll put them in the next, next clip we do for you. I appreciate the subscriber base growing the way it has been. Uh, you guys have been very supportive of the channel, so please keep that up. And uh, thanks an awful lot for watching. Mm -hmm.